Okay, welcome to the fifth video in the forces section. Uh, this video relates to uh, rotational mo uh, motion, um, which in the case of A-level, uh, if that's what you're interested in, is only um, tendency for rotation. That's, uh, you know, existence in equilibrium. Uh, up to now, we just dealt with forces, linear forces, um, but this is uh, this is the bit the, in the level two, syllable syllabus that is usually labelled moments. Um, <clears throat> so, as opposed to linear forces, we're looking at the net force in a specific direction. It's the net moment that must e equal uh, zero. So, what is the moment? Um, the moment basically is if we uh, look here, we've got a force. It's 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 the force times the distance um, from some point. Here we're going, you know, we typically measure it from it. x because there's a there's a pivot here. This is like a a beam. Incidentally, this is we assume this is a light beam in this example, which means it has no no uh, no mass and therefore no weight. Um, and and so when we look at the the, the moments, what we, what we want to do is that we pick our point where we where, where where we measure the moments from. Usually we do that from a, a point very often, which which eliminates one of the forces and makes makes the problem easier. And we'll see more about that in, in, in uh, uh, a couple of minutes. But um, yeah, so if we look at the total clockwise moments in this particular system, we've got this person here, uh, 80 G Newtons, sitting here two meters away from this pivot. So their total uh, total moment about this point is 160 G. When we look at the total anti-clockwise moment, then um, this lighter person, the 40 G is four meters away. So Four g forty g times four equals one hundred and sixty g. So, uh, so the anti-clockwise and the clockwise moments uh, are equal, and therefore uh, it's the system is in equilibrium. Okay. Um, now, had the uh, had we taken some weight or something, you know, if this beam had got some mass, and we we're taking that into account, then there'd be a force here. So there would have been an extra. Uh, an extra anti-clockwise um, moment here, so therefore it would have tilted anti-clockwise unless this person were lighter or they sat closer to the pivot. Okay, so um, that's the other thing I just want to say about this is very often in these pro uh, problems, we're also interested in linear forces. So um, because it often helps us to uh, to resolve for unknown forces. So here, for instance, if we wanted to know the reaction force at this point X, the upward force, I mean, all this system is not moving anywhere. So the total upward force must equal the total downward force. We've got total downward force of 120 G newton. So this reaction, which must act from this point here, would be 120 G newtons. Um, so that so uh, that comes into most of these uh, these problems um, uh, at some point, but uh, so worth remembering that. Okay, so the best way I think of actually sort of elaborating on these principles, as principles fairly straightforward, uh, is to is to do some examples. So let's just have a look here. Right, so what have we got? A uniform plank, uniform very, means the the mass is uh, effectively in the center, and therefore the weight acts from the center of the plank. It has weight 100 newtons. Uh, and interesting here is that we're not given the weight in uh, or the mass in kilograms for us to actually work out what the weight is. It's it's already done for us as a as 100 newtons. So, um, it's slightly simpler, I suppose and length four meters, four meters. The plank rests horizontally in equilibrium on two smooth supports, C and D. There we go. And AC equals X we've got here, and then we've got another half a meter before we get to, to this point, D. Uh, the magnitude of the reaction of the support on the plank at C is 75 newtons, as we've shown in the diagram. Uh, modeling the plank as a rigid rod would have to be find the magnitude of the reaction of the support on the plank 
at D. So the first bit is just what I said a few moments ago, that which was about the um, uh, the, the linear forces. So here we've got two upward linear forces, 75 and the reaction at D, which I've denoted by RB, and a downward force of 100 newtons. So therefore RD plus 75 equals 100, and therefore RD equals 25 newtons. Okay, so now we'll look at the rotational aspect of it. <clears throat> and um, uh, essentially, if we look at the the, uh, the 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 clockwise moments, what have we got? So, if we, what I've, I've uh, chosen to do is take take moments from A. Now, we could have done we could have done it from C or D. We could have done it from this end of the beam, actually, um, or somewhere along here, or probably out here in in, in space if we wanted. But we tend not to do that. Just tend to take it from a convenient place and. And since our measurement of X is from this point, in this case, it makes sense to, to do it from A. So something you just have to consider when you're, when you're actually doing these problems. Um, but if, you know, if we'd wanted to eliminate RD um, there, say we didn't know it, and, you know, um, and we didn't have the first part of the question, we might have chosen to actually do it from on this point because then we wouldn't really be interested in what rd actually was because it would have no there would be no moment resulting from this force because we're taking you know the distance would be zero okay but we're taking it from a here so uh, clockwise uh this distance is two meters we've got a hundred newtons so that's a hundred times two and then looking at the anti-clockwise moments we've got this distance, which is x times the force of 75 newtons. Yeah. And then we've got um, this distance, which is x plus 0 0.5, and this force, Rd, which we know to be 25. OK, so that's this component here. OK, so uh, basically, we just bang them into this equation. Um, this is an equation purely in x. Uh, so therefore we can solve for, me, uh, for x using a bit of algebra, and that's giving us x equals 1.875 meters, um, which looks about right on this diagram. Um, but of course, they need not have drawn this accurately. These This C and D could have been shown a little bit further up. Um, but, um, you know, it would have all come out in the, in the numbers at the end, so it wouldn't really, wouldn't really matter. The diagram helps, but um, you've just got to be a little bit careful how we interpret it. So that is, uh, that is that example. Okay, let's move on to this one. Now, a lot of these examples with beams involve supports or pivots, um, but sometimes they involve um, ropes. So this beam here has been supported by two ropes. Let's have a look at the question. A plank AB has mass 40 kilograms and length three meters. A load of mass 20 kilograms is attached to the plank at B. So here we go, so here's the plank, supported at A and C. It's three meters. We don't know yet. It hasn't told us that it's a uniform plank. So, but anyway, we've got this mass of 20 G. And, and the and the weight of that bearing down uh, is 20, 20 g newtons. The mass is twenty kilograms. Um, <clears throat> the loaded plank is held in equilibrium with AB horizontal by two vertical ropes attached at A and C. The plank is modelled as a uniform rod, so therefore the mass is uh, acts at the centre and the weight acts from the mass at the centre. And the load as a particle. That means we don't have to worry about it being kind of spread over over a distance here. Given that the tension in the rope at C is three times the tension in the rope at A, calculate first of all the tension in the rope at C. Right, this is the this is the linear uh, linear bit. Um, so let's just have a look at that. Consider the forces vertically. Well. Um, we're told that the, the tension at C is three times the tension at B. And then the total tension, the tension, the sum of these two tensions has got to be equal to the sum of the two weights downwards because it's in equilibrium 
in the vertical sense. Um, so TC plus TB equals 40G plus 20G newtons, that's 60G. And therefore, we can see from that that TC is equal to 45G newtons. The tension at C is 45. And we've marked that on the diagram here, 45G. And of course, that leaves 15G here. Right, so... Um, the second part, find the distance uh, CB, BC, or whatever, uh, here. So uh, in true algebra fashion, we don't that's, we don't know that. So let BC equals X, that's what we've got there. And then um, if we look at the clockwise moments, okay, we're taking moments about C here. Again, we could have taken the moments about the center point. We could have taken the moments about A, um, you know, um, in this example, it wouldn't really matter too much, uh, uh, to be honest. But anyway, so we've chosen to take it about C. Um, <clears throat> I think that's partly because you know X appears neatly in the in the in the equation as a result. Anyway, uh, so C, um, the clockwise moments are 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 given by first of all by this uh, tension acting upwards. Well, which is this distance, 1.5 plus 1.5 minus x. So that's a total of 3 minus x. And the force is 15g. So that's what we've got there, 15g times 3 minus x. And then on the anti-clockwise, I'm sorry, on the clockwise uh, team, uh, we've also got this 20g newtons acting at the distance of x from c. Then looking at the uh, the anti-clockwise team well there's only one player and that's this 40g and the weight of 40g uh, bearing down here that's the weight of the beam itself and that acts to distance of 1.5 minus x from c okay so if we um so this the clockwise moments must equal the anti-clockwise moments so we bang those into to our equation the, uh, clockwise equals the anti-clockwise and then uh, basically that's just an equation in x uh, we note that the the g actually uh, cancels out and there's just a little uh, uh, footnote there is don't be too ready to actually multiply through by 9.8 or whatever you're using um, particularly true in the case of g in these moments problems but generally generally true in in, in solving um uh, mechanics problems very often many many problems um but certainly here uh, this g cancels so it would have been a bit of a mistake had we multiplied it all out um and then we just got an equation in in x and uh, we can just work that one through and we find that x equals one third of a meter um <clears throat> so that's uh that's what that is uh it's drawn it doesn't quite look like that does it but uh that's that is the answer Okay, so uh, that is a beam with two supporting ropes. This is this, this this final one is 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 the same. We've got two two supporting ropes and a beam, but this is this is to illustrate something slightly different. We read through it. A uniform horizontal beam of length six meters and weight six hundred newtons is supported by two ropes. Uh, each attach one meter from the center at A and B. So here we go. We've got um, this distance is two meters, one meter, one meter, and then two meters to the end. A man of 800 newtons initially stood at the center of the beam, walks rightward along the beam. What distance X meters from the center of the beam can he get before the beam tips? So you can imagine he starts here. I mean, really, he can, he can, he can walk along here without any problem. Um, but when he when he gets past B, there is now a, there, what's actually happening is that there's there's that this rope here at A is going to start to slacken. Okay, um, and when he gets to a certain point, it'll have slacked off, so there's zero tension in it. Now, now why is that? Well, it's because as he moves further along the beam. He is actually the, the the moment that results from his weight is increasing. So it's force times distance, and the distance increases, so the moment increases. So, uh, so the the moment resulting from this 
uh, man here increases. Now, um, <clears throat> we, we, the total tension in these two um, is it, it, it remains the same because the total upward force is the same as the total downward force. That doesn't change throughout the whole problem. Um, but what's actually happening is that um, that more of that tension is being taken up by TB. And, and this reduces, and it reduces and reduces and reduces until as the man proceeds and gets to a certain point, the tension is then zero. And that is therefore the, 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 the tipping point. So what point is this man taking up all the tension? Okay, so uh, let's have a look at this. So at the start of all this, um, TA plus TB is going to be equal to this. These two, these two uh, uh, weights here. These two forces, total of fourteen hundred. Um, now it's the point at which the beam tips is P, and that distance there is X. So he's gone. He, he's, he's walked X meters, and as the man moves rightward, more of the fourteen hundred is taken by TB until TA becomes zero. So if we take moments about B, the clockwise moments are, well, this is 800 newtons due to the man. And this distance here, um, I mean, it suits us to eliminate B, um, but it, you know, it, it, it makes it more, more convenient in this case, but, but probably not essential. Anyway, so the total moment is gonna be um, 800 times this distance here, well, this distance is x, and that one of it is there, so this distance must be x minus one. We've got, well, we've got nothing really coming from this one because the force is now zero. It's now slack, is this? So I'll put it in any way, zero, zero newtons times two meters, uh, that distance is two meters. But of course it contributes zero in terms of the moments. And then in the anti-clockwise uh, sense, we've got, 600 newtons acting here, which is one meter from the uh, from this point B. So uh, so there we go. So we've got our uh, our equation there again. I'll probably skip to um, a line or two in algebra terms, but I think uh, you know if the, you can just work that through yourself and you find that we get 800 x equals 1400, so x equals 14 over eight which is 1.75. So X is 1.75 uh, meters from M. Um, and therefore that is the distance um, from the center of beam that he can get before the beam tips. Okay, so uh, some sort of relatively straightforward um, problems there. Um, we'll be illustrating those with some, some um, questions that are a bit more complicated and interesting in some other videos, but hopefully that's got the, the concepts across. Um, so uh, that's it for this video, and I hope that's been useful, and we'll see you next time.